I glanced and I saw a man walking and I thought, oh, somebody's come in. And as I got to the door, I looked at the door, there was nothing there. And split seconds after that, one of the toddlers said, Mummy, I don't like that daddy man. I want to see the shadow figure, the shadow man, or the daddy man, that one of the little children refers to him as. I'm not in some abandoned mental asylum, creepy graveyard, or even some medieval castle. This is industry. This is an industrial unit. It could be on the edge of your town. But there's a problem here. It's got a dark past. And it's got a haunting. Which wasn't usually a problem until this place has been repurposed. And now it is a problem. This tragic munitions factory has a spirit that won't leave and plenty of people have seen it and with my paranormal weaponry we've got it This is Bertley, Tyne and Weir, an industrial expansion of Gateshead, now its own town that is watched over by the area's guardian angel. But this was once part of Belgium. When the First World War broke out, it was quite apparent that Britain didn't have enough munitions to carry on fighting, resulting in a diplomatic deal between the Belgian government to supply thousands of workers unfit for frontline battlefields to come over and work keeping the war machine running. In exchange, Britain created a small town called Elizabethville, complete with accommodation and shops for the workforce and their families, and actually handed it over to Belgium, right here in Berkeley. In fact, this was a Belgian colony, with passport checks required for a border crossing and it was even ran by Belgian police under Belgian law. These small buildings are all that remain of that village. And this is the building that those 6,000 workers were here to work in. Prior to 1913, only 39 people worked at this factory, which expanded to the size of what it is now. Following the war, it became a tin plates factory until it was later closed down and repurposed for smaller businesses. The original features of the factory remain with beams, bricked up doorways and the original roof. A shadow figure is the main ghost that is said to be haunting this place. He's believed to be a Belgian soldier who stayed in the area after the war, working in the factory when his head was crushed by a lathe. Lynn Hope runs a gymnastics school in the building and she believes that she has seen him. I was, uh, when we first moved in, we had scaffolding and I was about half, past halfway in the hall and I was taking bolts from the, the uh, tops and I dropped the spanner and I saw what I thought was my husband walk underneath and when I shouted of him to pass the hammer up, he was at this far end of the, the hall. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, you've just walked under the scaffold. And he says, I've stood here all the time. And I was convinced somebody had walked underneath the scaffold. But the hauntings go back a lot further. A chance encounter with a former factory worker who used to work here, now visiting with their grandchildren. He was sitting watching the beginners and um, I went up to have a, a chat, I can't remember what I'm ta talking about, and I just said, he said, well, have you seen him then? And I went, seen him? And he says, the ghost. And I, I said, what do you mean? He says, well, I used to work here and there was a ghost always 
turned up. And I said, yeah, I have actually. And um, he just said that some of the workmen wouldn't go in on their own in the, into the where they worked when it was the ROF. And he said some of the fellas wouldn't go in because they were terrified of this ghost. And um, and I just said I'd, I'd seen sightings of him, um, very tall, explained what he looked like. And he went, yeah, that's him. A Belgian man is said to have gone mad in here and he was sent to the nearby Cherry Knowles Mental Asylum, where he died shortly later. His spirit has been picked up by several mediums in here. Another man, called Francois Coules, was injured whilst fighting on the front line and sent to Birdley to work in this very factory. He died shortly after starting work here. Jacques Mbondo originally from the Congo in Africa, was fighting for Belgium after the German army had invaded. Despite Belgium not wanting any black soldiers fighting on the front line, Mbondo had signed up so quickly that he had gone straight to the battlefield. He was lightly injured and removed from the army where he was sent to a hospital in London. And next record show, he was working here in Bertley. Within a month of him working at this factory, he died of pneumonia complications, aged just 23 years old. Armand Henri Marie Hasvoetz was another ex soldier sent to work here, but died in November 1918 of an unlisted disease. There's also a story of a man called Lovenfoss, another ex soldier, on his day off, drowned whilst bathing in the River Weir at Chesterley Street. Because everyone who worked here was still technically under military law, working conditions were strict and military uniform was always worn. An incident of one man leaving the camp in civilian clothes saw him locked up for four days, a move which saw an angry rebellion of 2,000 workers ripping the fence up around this car park and attacked police. The British police arrived and prevented a full riot. Conditions in the factory were hot, as the machines were on 24-7. Workers worked six straight days, and then six straight night shifts. A man called Francis Peters had his arm ripped off inside one of the machines he was inspecting, which hadn't been switched off properly. The shadow figure that many people see today has been seen plenty of times, and was even known as the Daddy Man by a small child who described seeing him whilst at a gymnastics event in the building. Yeah, about the same time we were, it was our opening presentation, like our opening display and we were rehearsing the preschoolers to walk, march on and march around the hall. And as we walked past the window, I glanced and I saw a man walking and I thought, oh, somebody's come in. And as I got to the door, I looked at the door, there was nothing there. And split seconds after that, one of the toddlers said, Mummy, I don't like that daddy man. And I said, what did he say? And she says, oh, she says, he calls men daddy men. And she says, he's saying that there's a man standing at the door and he doesn't like him. And I said, funny enough, I've just seen somebody walk past the windows. Um, but when I looked at the opening, he wasn't there. And he just kept pulling his mum, saying, come on, mummy, I don't like that daddy man, as if he was still there, and he said. And then on another occasion, one of our little ones had said the same. She was at the counter and the man was talking and she said, mum, come on, I don't like that man. He's staring at me. And there was nobody there either. We had some new people who had, didn't know anything about, we, we call this, this figure Bob didn't know anything about Bob and they said they saw somebody walk down the tumble track in late at night and uh, they thought it was me and then it disappeared. So they, they were quite, they weren't scared but they said they saw somebody walking down and another sleepover they said somebody was sitting next to the fire. This is CCTV footage of a paranormal group's Ouija board being flipped over before they had a chance to investigate in here. 
Is there a scientific explanation to this? Or did somebody not want it in use? I've been given full access to come in and investigate this very building. Before we start the investigation though, please click like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel where we have lots of paranormal investigations on there. And if you haven't already done so, head over to Spotify. The Dead Air Clinically Dead podcast is available. Just subscribe to it and you will get the free podcasts whenever a new one has been released. Well, this is it. You join me in what is essentially an empty gymnasium. The gymnastics group that usually use this place on a weeknight have left. It is just myself. Lynn is sat in an office on the other side of the building and we've got the entire gymnasium of Northern Hope here to ourselves tonight. Now people talk about seeing an apparition in here, the children that use this gymnasium who even have sleepovers in this place at night, they say that they see things in here all the time. So many paranormal groups have come in here and have got things. But let me just give you a little show around of what we've got. Um, I'm using a new piece of kit that is a sensor which measures the pressure in the environment. 23 measurements per second. If it detects any change that will alarm. Scientific research does show that paranormal activity occurs when or is reported when atmospheric changes occur uh, within the environment. That will monitor that. So if we get a sudden temperature change. I don't mean like it gradually cools down. I mean within like a short period of time then that will alarm. Scientific research does show that paranormal activity occurs when or is reported when atmospheric changes occur. Over here the trusted REM pod which I will give you a little demonstration of. It measures anything that goes within its uh, aura. It's got a little um, field around it so if I just put my arm out by touching it it gets a little bit louder and it alarms so where do we start with this place well I'm coming down the bottom end this is the furthest away from any of the uh, doorways or anything like that People report seeing things down here, so let's just reach out and ask if anyone wants to make contact with me in here tonight, you're free to do so. My name is Rob. I am purely here just to try and speak to whoever could be in this place, understand why you're here, why you're still in this place. Why people keep seeing you? I'm not trying to banish you or do any damage or anything like that. We just want to know. Some wood there. Who it is? Oh, is this like a changing area? There's little locker rooms. And you'll see that this whole gymnasium is. Um, Full of apparatus and equipment. We've got the original corrugated roof when this place was a factory, a munitions factory. We heard stories of um, people who used to work here when this was an old factory, tin plates factory in the later part of the 20th century, that it had a ghost. And they would say things like, oh, um, so now you believe that there's a ghost in there because they worked in this place. Um, you'll see, I just want to show you some features. We've got these kind of um, little doorways up here. We've got like a little archway in the roof. There's a couple more that are blocked up 
you can see it there and that's just where the munitions used to go through there's a train line on the other side of here uh, just through here there's a cold draft in this room so this is where all of the ammunition the, the, essentially the, the munitions that were going to the war front they would come through here and on the other side of that wall, maybe a few metres on the other side of that wall, was the old Bertley train station. And that's where they were loaded up, taken onto train and sent off to wherever they needed to be. I'm looking for the person that we see in here. So there's anybody at all in here. Can you let yourself be known to me? Train. So you hear the train, there's literally a, a fire door just on the other side of that mesh, there's a toilet, oh, yeah, oh, and the fans come on. I'm going to try and get the EMF meter out in a bit and we're going to measure to see whether that train can produce enough fluctuation in the enough disturbance really. We talk about infrasound and things like that that can manipulate people's mental state into believing that they've had a paranormal experience. It'll be so interesting to see whether um, that can be responsible for what people are experiencing. So look at these old doors here, this old archway. This was essentially like a long line, part of the production line. And it would just come out into this Yeah, you can see, look, there's the columns on the wall. This would have been a, an exit. You can see the, you can see it just there. That would have been an old entrance way, an exit way where things could have been loaded onto trains. And, and it's mad to think, and I know it's nothing paranormal, but it's mad to think that things that were made in this factory killed people. There would have been grenades, there would have been bullets, metallic things used in warfare that have killed thousands of people. I know it was a war, we had to go to war, but it's weird to think that that happened barely in the last century, over a century ago. There we go, through this curtain and back into the main gymnasium we go I want to see the shadow figure the shadow man or the daddy man that one of the little children refers to him as click next to me but oh, was that a bucket have they got a leak be a leak coming from the from the ceiling so there's going to be noises it's an old corrugated roof yeah that's definitely drops coming down does anybody want to make contact with me in here tonight you can do. My name is Rob. Any way that you can. Are you a worker from the old factory days? Do you harm the young children that come in here? What do you think of this place now being used as a gymnasium?
can I see you? Other people get to see you, but I, I don't. Would it be possible if I could see you? I'm going to use a translation app because there will always be some people who will say, well, you're trying to speak to someone who wasn't English and I get it, they didn't speak English in here. So um, let's have a listen. So I'm going to put something into Flemish. Flemish was very similar to Dutch, uh, French maybe. So let's just have a listen. Hello, my name is Rob. Can I you see? Can I hear you make a sound? Can you do something to make me aware of your presence? Some noise is coming from over there on the other side of the gymnasium. It's gone out of focus, but I think it's you're going to get natural sounds in here. Let's focus. I might go and get the spirit box. Oh, this is over there. This is the wall. There's another factory on the other side of this wall. So this is like a sound insulated wall that they've had to put, they've had to put in because there was noises from the lathes. And um, there's another uh, machine factory on the other side there. And it was incidentally a lathe that we believe killed the worker in this building. Um, he was a Belgian. He was called Edmund. Do you like the sound of the lathes next door? Or does that remind you of what happened to you? It's old Henry the Hoover. There's a train going past. Okay, we need to do something to try and catch the next train going past. They seem to be going past every 10 minutes or so. Let's get some equipment. Okay, I'm using an illuminator because it's so dark in here and also because the walls are so far apart that my infrared light is not able to sort of like shine on anything from such a short distance. So I'm using an illuminator just to see a little bit more in the dark. Hello, who's here? What's your name? Are you from Belgium? Did you work in this factory during the First World War, the, the Great War? You wouldn't have called it the First World War, would you? Did you build munitions in here? Did you come from Belgium?
on the floor I've got a few things, a few gadgets. If you go near them, I might be able to sense that you're around. Can you touch that black thing on the floor? Can you go near it? Can you touch the little shiny thing on the top? The metallic thing? Is that you talking to me? I can hear you if it is. Just touch it. Put your energy into it. I'm using a device which is able to measure electromagnetic energy and distinguish what the source could be, such as a Wi-Fi signal, mobile phone, or an electrical current. I'm also curious to see how this peaks when a train goes past. As a paranormal investigator, I'm aware that the majority of paranormal incidents in this building are visual apparitions, which means I'm going to try and capture this thing onto camera. But I had absolutely no idea what would happen next. I'm going to try taking some photographs in here. Um, just some low light photography just of the different parts of the room, see if we can capture anything, so... Um, Still hearing noises all the time. This is one of those moments where, as an investigator, the hair on the back of your neck stands on end. What I can see clearly at the bottom of the hallway is a figure standing, looking directly at me. Yet when we compare this to footage captured earlier on, there is clearly nothing there. And in images with the flash on and off, you can't see anything. And this is the same image that I have brightened and enhanced, and you can still clearly see that there is some kind of outline there. And then when I realise what is going on, these two orbs go straight past me whilst I am reviewing the images on my phone. Like anybody else who sees a ghost, the first thing you should do is go and chase it. It looks like there's somebody, there's somebody standing there. There's somebody standing there. I can see you. What's that? Gymnasium stuff. Over here. There was a figure. Obviously I get it, these are mirrors. So, if I was there, it would be reflecting off here at that angle. There's nothing over here that could be reflecting into that mirror. I mean, we've got a, a fire door. That's an exit door, that's a fire door going out. 
That looks like somebody stood there. You can see a face. So, I'm looking at angles because this is what you've got to do when you get something in the mirror. You've got to look at where you took it from, draw a line, and then work out what could have been reflected into the mirror. And there's, there's a couple of crash mats here. They're, they're too thick. Although, at that angle, it's twisted, so it look, it'll look now. The wrong angle, it would need to be something over here. So there's a fire door that would look dark in the shot. We need to see if we can speak to anything that's in here. We've got the recorder, voice recorder. Hello. I think I've just seen you. If that is you, can you come and talk into my little red light on here, just so I can hear what your voice sounds like? Can you say your name? see it. Where you've seen him is in the door. If I can press it. Can you, uh, I'm stood in the doorway where I believed I saw you right in front of this mirror. If this is somebody standing here, someone in this area, can you tell me your name? is all around here. Did you die in here? This is incredible. If you died in here, can you say yes, no? Can you just tell me what happened to you? Okay, end recording. I heard your voice. If that was you coming through on the on the uh, voice recorder, I'm hearing noises everywhere. It's just constant taps, but I think that's natural. Right, who are you? What is your name? Am I okay being here? Do you mind if I'm here? Is this the spot where you died? Because people see you around here. I've possibly seen you here. Is this the spot where you died? Ending recording. Okay, being here, do you 
Yes. There's a train going past. There's a train going past, so that's a rumble. I'm just going to go and check the EMF. Readings. There's a lot of energy going past right now. It's got little peaks, but it's nothing, nothing major. It's coming this far in. Okay. I'm going to use a ghost troops here, which will allow me to hopefully see any spirit that's in here, what's coming through. What the hell's that? Can I see what you look like? Can you show yourself using this application where I will be able to see an image of you? Can you show yourself to me? Show yourself. Can you touch this device that's on the floor? Like that, what I have just done. Zoom into here for a little bit. A lot of people get things in this room. When I was here with Alan Robson last summer, one of these toys kept going off constantly, and I can't remember which one it was. But it's freezing in here, freezing. Much colder in this room. Much colder in here. Somebody can please make a knock or a bang or set one of these toys off. It's a very soft floor. It's probably the nicest floor I've ever walked on in a paranormal investigation. You, you saw used to walk in, up and down like spirally stone castle turrets and through mud in haunted forests at night. It's so nice to have a night. This is, we could come ghost hunting in here every week. This would be perfect for ghost hunting. Comfortable, not too sort of damp and dark, yet they get the paranormal activity in here, which is brilliant. We just got that one strange image coming through on ghost tubes here. Just the one. Let's see if we can capture anything in here. <coughs> Excuse me, cough. Okay, can you come and talk into the voice recorder, please? If there's somebody in here, can you say hello to me?
Here's an interesting one. Do you feed off the energy from the railway line? Because I, I imagine there's a lot of electricity goes through there. Do you feed from that? Do you get some sort of energy that you can manifest yourself when the trains go past? That's an interesting thing. Obviously, this, people will say that, you know, infrasound creates the paranormal state of mind. But is there anybody here? Can you use that energy from those railway lines to manifest? How many spirits are in here? Is there just the one? Because we only see the one shadow apparently. be my finger shuffling but this place is fascinating because I think there could be different elements of what's going on in here we could have the whole infrasound thing people thinking that they're seeing things when they're not because they've got some sort of train going past Yeah, look at the spike. The ghost tube seer brought up this image, which I totally didn't even think about at the time, but appears to show injured soldiers. Is this a spirit introducing themselves as a soldier, bearing in mind that all of the workers sent from Belgium here were injured frontline soldiers? Okay, I'm using a, a voice bank of sounds. Is there anybody here? Use the sounds in my... The phonetic sound bank. Make a word. Is there many people in here? Four. How long have you been here for? Are you from the First World War, the Great War? Are you Belgian? Did you die in an accident in this factory? Use the energy to manifest from the train. Two trains going past. You can feel the building shake. Yeah, look at that. It's... We're getting some readings off it, but... Last chance before I go. Who did I see? Was that somebody? I, I'm going to need to... Obviously I've looked. I'm going to need to look at that on a big screen. But it looks like a person stood here. Can you come back? Can you show yourself? Or do you only appear in photographs?
Who are you? Are you Edmund? Edmund, come and chat. I'm not. I just want to. I want to see you. I want to. There's people that will say that it's a load of nonsense that you exist. People who will say that it's what a load of rubbish. How can you still be there? How can someone who's died still be around? What a load of nonsense. There'll be people who say that. You've lived a hard working life. You've fought for your country at some point. You've worked in these factories where the conditions were hot. Long night shifts and day shifts. You've worked all that. You deserve more than to be not acknowledged. You had a horrible injury that resulted in death. You can't just be not acknowledged. You've got to be... People need to... Respect that you can still be here. I'm looking in the mirror. Can you show yourself in the mirror? If I shine the light. Obviously we've got handprints. Can you please just do any kind of activity to make me aware of your presence? Just, the kids see you and they're not frightened of you. They think it's quite cool that you're here. But I want to just prove to people who talk about ghosts and the spirit world. And I know it's sad that you might be on, on the other side. And I don't even know if you're aware that you, you're on the other side. But... Make yourself known. Make your presence known. It would be incredible if you could be the one spirit that could prove the existence that there is some kind of thing after after death. And it could be you that could do that for humanity. Give us that assurance that when we go, there's something else that takes happens on the other side, that we're not just climbing on gymnastic stuff now, I, should, I probably shouldn't be. I'm going to go in two minutes, Edmund. I've got not long to go. Can you show yourself to me? Surely you exist. People have seen you. And with that, my investigation of this building has come to an end. The following day, I went down to a small burial ground on the outskirts of Bertley because I wanted to spend some time around the graves. I've come down to this quiet little forgotten about cemetery really in a corner of Bertley. It's not the main cemetery anymore, that's up by the crematorium, but there's obviously not been any burials in here for quite a while, but this is where our Belgians are marked with proper war graves. They've still got poppies on them. People still remember that they're here. Is our man one of these? Is he here? Is this where he lies? And the irony being surrounded completely by industry. Factories where these people came and worked and some of them died. And just days after filming this, this graveyard made local news when a lorry crashed through the railings and miraculously missed every single grave. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe to the Dead Air channel. Thank you very much for watching.